Reindeer Studios presents Three Dumb Questions! Hey, superstars, welcome to Three Dumb Questions. I am your host, Scott. This is the show where uh, there are no dumb answers, only dumb questions. And to be on the show, your first name has to start with the letter D. So I have today uh, my good friend, Doug, from Don't Talk to Robots. Doug, thanks for being here, buddy. Scott, thanks for having me on. How are you? I'm uh, doing all right. We're hang- we're hanging in there. I-, I love the hot dog attire. I feel like it's kind of it's now become a staple. Like uh, if I showed up without it on, then you'd be like, I, "What's yeah. the matter? Like, are you going through something or or what?" So I was hoping that you would show up that way. <laughs> um, so the channel is "Don't Talk to Robots," um, and I can relate. Have you seen my Alexa videos? The way she treats me. Yeah, that's a little that's a little harsh. Yeah. So that, it's good advice. It, yeah. I it started way back in the day when um I don't know if you remembered uh either Ron Ron or Rob Blagojevich. He was a uh, governor of Illinois. Okay. Anyway, he would this was like the early 2000s and he would call uh where I was working like the robo calls. And so I'd pick it up and be like, "Hey, this is Rob Blagojevich. Make sure to come out to vote for me." I'm like, I, and I just, I just yell, "I don't talk to robots and hang up the phone." So <laughs> that's awesome. That's just became my moniker since then. <laughs> All right, so you and I collect in completely different ways. I collect one team, and I kind of primarily focus on vintage. But uh, you rip packs, and you collect Daryl Strawberry and Ken Griffey Jr and modern inserts and stuff like that um and i know you're a big fan of trading card database right yes Uh, yes and uh do you use spreadsheets too or not no i pretty much everything is um in there i guess no that's not true sometimes when i'm working on a rainbow i'll kind of copy over um some stuff from tcdb just Mm -hmm. so i can kind of have a clear view of like here's the ones i have here's the ones i don't have because I'll be working on like a rainbow and then I'll be like, Oh, I need that one. And then I'm like, no, I I've got d- doubles or triplicates of that one. And then, so yeah, sometimes I'll use spreadsheets for that. Okay. I, I kind of use both. Like it's nice to have the spreadsheet, like when I'm in a card shop or something and I don't have to use the web for that. Yeah. But. Their mobile, their mobile experience isn't great. Like it's really hard to try to find <laughs> anything on TCDB. When you're on your phone, so but it's a great resource. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, like I just work. Wish it worked a little bit better than it does. Yeah. Not not to bad mouth TCDB. But <laughs> never, never. It's, <laughs> it's very useful, and the people over there are top notch. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Um, but we do have a lot of common ground. It seems we both seem to collect what makes us happy, rather than what's going to um, make us money, which Definitely. I, like, that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't think I, I, I probably have some, you know, some pretty big Daryl strawberry cards, but I, you know, I, he's not like a highly sought after collector. I'm sure like, you know, when I bequeath these to my children, they're not going to be worth a ton, <laughs> probably worth less than I paid for them, but I definitely enjoy them. And, um, that was, that was like, uh, my brother Andy and I, like when we started first started collecting, we had a neighbor and he's like, you guys got to decide like who you're going to collect and stuff. And so I picked Daryl Strawberry and that's kind of been my guy uh, since I was a youth. And that's cool. Yeah. My wife really likes Daryl Strawberry because she had uh, when she was playing Little League softball, she had a big pink Daryl Strawberry baseball mitt. Oh, nice. So nice. that's that's her connection to Strawberry. And then. It's funny enough, I always made fun of her for that mitt because it was pink. And um, I ended up buying her a Ken Griffey Jr. model. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's like you're our weird love child that we didn't even know about. <laughs> Your weird love child that just loves to dress up in a hot dog costume. So Right. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing, we we both can't help but edit our videos. So like when I started this, it was like, I want to make something that I don't have to edit and I still spend a good hour at least editing these things. Yeah, that was, if you go back and watch some of our earlier videos, it was just kind of one take and trying to do, and I would, I would, I'd have like 
five done in an evening. And so I could, you know, do them out over a couple of weeks or something like that. But yeah, now I've gotten the bug of wanting to edit it. And especially like, I feel like I have like mind farts halfway through things. Like my kids will comment too. They're like, why did you just stop? And I'm like, well, <laughs> my brain just like stopped. And so then I'll have to go through and find all the parts where I'm like opening packs. And then I just like pause or I, I can't, I'm like, what is this name? Like, I, I don't know this name and like edit that out. So it's not so cringy, but <laughs> I do love your editing. I you're really good at it. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, I enjoy it. it. It does. It is time consuming, but it is fun. And uh, sometimes I'll just add like a gif or something silly and mm -hmm. it makes me laugh. And I'm like, maybe people will like this, maybe it won't, but uh, it, it, late at night I'm enjoying myself. So that's good. <laughs> so like, I like to think that this YouTube part is, part of our hobby so we're not just collecting cards where we're making these videos and that's like a big part of it too and they're like why not do that to the best of your ability yeah definitely yeah, yeah i agree with that and i think too it's it, it's fun collecting but it's also fun like sharing what you get and and with other people and stuff like i think you know collecting when you're a kid you kind of did that with your friends and stuff but now it's like you're sharing it with anybody and people all over the world. And um, mm -hmm. that's just a cool, cool aspect of it. I'm, I'm not saying anything bad about people that don't edit videos. I want to point that out. Like I highly admire somebody that can get on and talk for a long time and just like no script, no anything. And that I can't do that. And it blows my mind. Yeah. No. But I'm I, yeah, I edit because I'm socially awkward <laughs> and I have to script everything. Nice, nice. All right. So um, also, we're both kind of design nerds. I think you're probably even more of a design nerd but myself. And I really like when you get all nerdy about car design. And um, I know a lot of people will see something and like, I really like that. Or I don't like it. They can't really um, articulate it the way that you can. And like you you can talk about what makes good design and what makes bad design. That's. Yeah. I, um, I, I was looking back through like old sketchbooks. I think I always considered myself like an artist, but then I'm looking through these sketchbooks. So did I. Yeah. Like when I was a kid and it was basically like, I was making logos and I was making like, it was basically, I was, I've always just wanted to be like a graphic designer and like that kind of aspect of art and stuff. Like, one of my favorite artists is um, Andy Warhol. You know what I mean? So it's all, it's all kind of like package design and branding and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. I, I did a little bit of that. Um, I, I did get paid some, you know, so I, I, I guess I qualify as a, de a designer because I have been paid in the past. I, I do like web development now. So I'm sure the, designers that I work with would be like, you're not a, you're a developer, you're not a designer, but I still, I still enjoy that aspect of, of things and, um, have a few, few designers and design agencies that I follow. And on that, and yeah, I think too, that when we're going back to like, collect what you like, like sometimes I'm, I'm collecting like an insert set or something just be, for the sole reason that I really like that design, like over any of the players or anything like that, where, mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, like I, I like what they did with that or different things like that. So I dig it. That's why I'm like trying to slowly put together the tops kids set because nice. I thought that was a really fun design. And yeah, this is sounding too intellectual for this show. <laughs> um, you also share a lot of your collecting experience with your family and that's, that's great. I love channels that do that. Um, it's, uh, how do your, kids feel like i know it seems like skylar doesn't care too much but she's really good natured about it and then yeah uh, yeah so um Sky, skylar likes i think filming more probably than like the actual like collecting cards and stuff there i think mm -hmm. there's a few kind of like alan ginter cards that she likes and like the different animals and stuff like that um but she likes and she enjoys it and indulges me i always I'm always asking the kids like what what is what's it like, you know, growing up with a, a famous YouTuber and they're like <laughs> like dad, whatever, like ugh, gross barf. Um because yeah, that's not true. Yeah, my <laughs> kid like brags to all his friends that yeah. like no no no. 
Um, and then Kaylin, she collects Chris Bryant, and I assume it's just because he was good looking. So probably, yeah, I think that has to do part of it. We we before we were making videos, I got a Stadium Club Chrome Blaster from 2021 when they used to have that, and I think 20. Oh, it might have been 2020. Anyway, she got uh, Chris Bryant Beam Team and. It, that design of the beam team is just amazing and especially on the chrome and stuff and so it, you know she likes the cubs and that mm-hmm. just that just kind of became her player and stuff and so yeah i think it just kind of took off from there and and people now send her a lot i mean i imagine i buy her chris bryant's every once in a while but I imagine like 80 percent of her collection has been from the card community sending her chris bryant's which is pretty awesome yeah, people spoil these kids yeah, definitely. Uh, what's what's Bubba into? <laughs> Bubba Bubba is kind of has a lot of interest. I mean, I think right now his his main interest is video games. <laughs> so okay. he's gonna be into there. Uh that uh he he does have a decent like Pokemon collection and stuff like that. Um I think his his favorite baseball player is Anthony Rizzo. Uh he's got like a Rizzo jersey t shirt and stuff like that. So cool. Yeah. Um, so you collect Lego minifigures as well as baseball cards. I do. Yes. Um, and I have a friend, few, few very good friends that collect uh, Lego and my son is really into it too. Um, do you have a favorite minifigure? I do. It is, let me see if this will work. You can see it. Okay. So this is a uh, Deadpool mm-hmm. and this is a set. This set came out. Uh, it was like. Deadpool was in a helicopter and then there's Wolverine and Magneto. And this came out before the Deadpool movies came out. And so the likelihood of Lego ever making another Deadpool minifigure is pretty low. Right. <laughs> and so, and I just like, I like the fact that his, uh, the head print there, I feel like you could use that for like a custom Spider-Man figure or like the red hood from Batman a uh, different thing like that. So it's kind of versatile. And I was like, I think I might've had some of these in my, in my youth, like with the, mm-hmm. uh, the castle sets and stuff like that, where you had the two swords in the back. So I don't know. I think that was pretty cool. It might, it might also be my most valuable because I think it's, it became more popular after the movies came out. But. Yeah. My, my son has actually talked about that one. Oh, nice. So I have it on good authority because he watches a lot of YouTube about Lego and, how much it's worth. Nice, nice. <laughs> um, okay, so let's get into the dumb questions. You ready for this? Yes. How this works, I'm going to ask Doug three dumb questions, and they don't have to be sports-related or sports card-related. Um, I have given him the first two ahead of time, and we're going to put him on the spot and spin the wheel of dumb questions for question number three. And if he behaves, he gets to ask me a dumb question. So nice let's do this so dumb question number one you live in chicago it's famous for all kinds of great foods my favorite is like the italian beef sandwiches um it's got deep dish pizza and the chicago hot dogs so being a big hot dog fan what do you put on your hot dogs so well you you mentioned italian beef and i think we've talked about portillo's in the past right Mm -hmm. and have you had the combo before uh no i haven't so the combo is the Italian sausage with Italian beef on it, which Ooh. is it's nice because it's like you get the Italian sausage, but then it's like the the garnish is Italian beef. <laughs> so it's just like meat. <laughs> wow. So growing up, I was pretty plain with my food. Like it was like plain hamburger with ketchup. And so I do the same thing with hot dogs. I would just have hot dog and ketchup. And I know that's kind of like a that definitely in Chicago, that's like a sin to ever say. <laughs> A hot dog with ketchup. So I have transitioned to liking mustard on my hot dogs. I also like uh, probably like chopped onions over like grilled onions. Mm-hmm. Uh, so and pretty much just that. The best hot dog I've ever had. Uh, there's a there's a place that used there used to be a hot dog place called Hot Dogs, and they had a jalapeno cheddar bacon sausage. That also had cheddar and jalapenos on top of it, so it was like, it was like a spicy kind of sausage, but then it had that on top of it, and that was wow. that was the most amazing hot dog I've ever had. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard of hot dogs. 
Nicely done. So question number two, dumb question number two. Um, just like me, you and your brother Andy from Flying Dutchman Cards, you experienced sort of your heyday of collecting in the late 80s and early 90s. So if you could go back to like 1990, what would you say to yourself? So I think the first thing I would say is you, when you go to that card show and you only have $10 and the Ken Griffey Jr. upper deck rookie card was $10, you should have just bought that Ken Griffey Jr. upper deck rookie card. So that was kind of my biggest regret um, when I was collecting as a kid because I was like, ah, I, I only have $10. I don't want to spend it on one card. I want to like buy a few packs, maybe buy a few singles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And nowadays it's not the most expensive card because it's fairly very you know, fairly available but um i imagine i probably would have got a lot more joy out of it if i had gotten it when i was a, a youth and still had it from that time and stuff like that so and then um yeah i, I think that'd be the number one thing probably you know probably i, I might recommend myself to you know Maybe worry less about girls, more about baseball cards. Okay. <laughs> you know, things will work out. You don't need to stress out so much about girls. Um, you know, invest in invest in some, you know, some uh, Ichiro rookie cards when those come out in a few mm -hmm. years, that kind of stuff. <laughs> I think we've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you have the 89 Upper Deck Griffey? I did. Um, and it was actually gifted to me from my brother. Mm -hmm. uh, he... He, he, he gets people just call, like call him up and be like, Hey, I have this collection. Can you go through and stuff like that? See if anything's worth it. And he, yeah, one of those instances got a, a sealed box of 89 upper deck. And so he kept the set and sent me the Ken Griffey Jr. So well, that's nice. That's, that's the one I got. Cool. Yeah. Um, I have one. It's also in the set. Nice. So I had one as a kid, but my neighbor stole it. Ooh. And then he tried to sell it back to me before I realized <laughs> that he stole it. <laughs> so, yeah. That's that's a little shady. That's a little yeah. shady. <laughs> yeah. All right. So good job with that one. Dumb question number three. We're gonna put you on the spot. We're gonna spin the wheel of dumb questions. You ready? I'm I'm ready. There it is. All right. Yeah, click on the right thing here. Ooh, I like this one. Infinite Dime Box. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, hypothetical. We have like a um, big cataclysmic event. Everybody's fine, but um, <laughs> there is no card market anymore. So, Every card you can get any card you want out of a dime box. So what's the first card you're going after? Any card ever? Any card ever. Oh my gosh. Remember that there, there it's not gonna go up. It's always gonna be a dime. Oh, so it's not it's not gonna be worth anymore. Right. But I could get any card that I want. Right. Okay. Man, I think I think I would go with. I I think the card that I, I really want, or a card that I really want, would be a Ken Griffey Jr. autograph. That's one that I just want at, at some point to get. So if I could get for a dime, that'd be great. I know there's a famous one of um, the Mickey Mantle and Ken Griffey Jr. kind of dual mm -hmm. auto one. Um, I mean, that one would be cool. But I would pretty much, I would take, you know, any of his rookie cards autographed would be cool as well. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's what I'd go with. Sounds good. Yeah. So not like the most expensive thing you could ever pick up. but No, I mean, I think it goes back to like, you know, collects what you like. You know what I mean? Like, right. of course, I could say like, you know, the Mickey Mantle, the horror, you know, mm. the really expensive one. But um, that's kind of one that I, I, I would really want. Especially, I mean, especially for a dime. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Actually, I have a bonus question from the audience. Uh -oh. uh, Andy, your brother, was texting me today. 
Oh, and nice. he wanted me to ask you why you don't like cornbread. <laughs> why I don't like cornbread? I don't know. I uh, see my brother. I go to my brother for all things from our youth because he has a much better memory from me than me, and so. I imagine there was probably something where I don't like cornbread for some specific reason or story, but in this moment, I do not remember that story. <laughs> I imagine it might just be, we grew up at like, uh, we grew up on the grounds of a conference center. My, like, like my dad was the maintenance guy there. Okay. And so we would eat a lot of meals um, in the dining room with all these groups and stuff like that. And so, I imagine we ate probably like a lot of cornbread back in the day and mm. just not my, just not my favorite kind of dry at times, you know, um, I'd rather have a nice moist biscuit or something. <laughs> okay. I actually had some really good cornbread tonight. It's from um, oh. famous Dave's, I think. Okay. It's nice. like a barbecue place, but you can yeah, buy boxes of, of it. Yeah. So that's, that's my favorite cornbread. Nice. Um, and it's never dry. So there you go. Maybe you should try that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you get to ask me a dumb question now. All right. So you're kind of known for your doodles and your doodle TTM, sending those out to get them TTMs. Sometimes mm -hmm. they keep them, sometimes they return them. I was wondering if you could send one to any past historical figure, any past uh, baseball player, um, it can't be Mossy though. It's got to be somebody else. Oh. And <laughs> uh, but uh, who would you who would you like to send? Uh, well, because you you get to make the doodle of it. So who would you like to make a doodle of, and then also send it send it out to and get it back? You took away right. my Mossy. Sorry, <laughs> I threw you a curveball. <laughs> you did. Um, probably that guy right behind me there, the Satchel Page. Nice. I think he'd be fun to draw. Yeah. Well, I have painted them before, but yeah. I, nice. That, I like that. I'd be. I, one, so I was, I was thinking uh, what I would like. Mm -hmm. At first, I was thinking Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Especially if you, if you did the doodle in a 1989 design, like the, <laughs> the baseball card design okay. of him playing baseball and then get that sign, I think that'd be pretty cool. But then I was like, Abraham Lincoln's cool, but one of my favorite historical figures is uh, Tesla, Nikola Tesla. So that would be a cool one too. That'd be pretty wild too, yeah. Because he was just. Hey, have you ever have you seen the Prestige? I have. I don't remember it very well, but I've seen it. Yeah, David Bowie was Tesla in that, uh, mm -hmm. and I mean, so yeah, I'm a big Tesla fan. So <laughs> that'd be a cool one. Cool. Good question. All right, so I think that was pretty painless. We we made it through. Yeah, you thanks for having me on. This was a blast. Three dumb questions and a bonus question. And That's awesome. You talked real smart about stuff for a while too, which is <laughs> extra bonus. So well, it has uh, been a lot of fun, and you are one of my two favorite Vandermeulen brothers. And um, I guess if you ever want to come back on or bring the kids, or you know, maybe. Ask Andy a dumb question if he ever gets on here. Yeah, definitely. I could do a, we could do like a, a video, uh, like a daily video daily double where mm -hmm. I could ask Andy a question. Put him on the I, spot. I did ask him to come on and he's like, I, I gotta go out to dinner. So I was like, oh man. Priorities. Priorities, Andy. I know. What where were you where would you get this chance to talk to you on YouTube? I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if any of you want to be on three dumb questions, um, feel free to comment me, comment, uh, contact me in the comments or through email or smoke signals or whatever. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Thanks for watching and be good.